Red Cedar River comes from its headwaters, which is uh, on Cedar Lake, which is in northern Livingston County, and it runs westward, westward toward uh, East Lansing. It comes through Okemos, East Lansing, Williamston. The Red Cedar is a, runs into Lake Michigan. It heads uh, uh, well east of Williamston and flows uh, uh, generally westward and a little bit north, emptying into the Grand River, uh, which is a part of the whole Grand River system, which uh, goes on and drains into Lake Michigan at Grand Haven. On the banks of the Red Cedar, there's a school that's known to all. Its specialty is when and those Spartans play the ball. Spartan teams, they are never beaten. All through the game they fight, fight for the only colors. Green and white Go right through for MSU Watch points keep rolling Spartan teams, they're bound to win The fighting with a vim See their team is weakening They're gonna win this game three times we canoed with with numerous other people on the Red Cedar and uh, there was a canoe livery as a part of Michigan State University. What I really love about the Red Cedar River is it has a very good calming effect. Um, I usually take my hammock and kind of bring it over there and get it in between two trees and sit there and do homework. Um, I also like to bring my girlfriend out there and we feed the ducks and you know kind of just uh, relax and you know kind of stick my hand in the water and feel the cool sensation, and feed the ducks, and you know, have a good time. And I came back to Michigan State in 1946 and was there and as a student and graduate student until 1952. And my major professor, uh, Dr. Ball, and I would fish the Red Cedar, uh, starting usually up around uh, Okemos Road and fishing down uh, probably to Farm Lane or someplace like that. I don't know, I like to watch the ducks, I guess. That's about all there is. In different sections of the Red Cedar River, you'll see things like um, caddis flies and uh, mayflies, things that are on the high um, level of uh, uh, they call it taxa, a group one or two or three taxa, and the group one taxa is basically um, a, uh, uh, they can, they, they're very pollution sensitive. So if there's any type of pollution at all, then you won't find those species there. Uh, with regards to wildlife, I mean, the best case scenario is to keep wildlife wild mm -hmm. and, um, you know, feeding wildlife can get them attached to a certain area. It may prevent them from doing what they are naturally used to doing and, and migrating. So we provide a constant food source. They're, they're less likely to do that. And who knows what we may be altering genetically with a wild yeah. population if we kind of breed that out of that, that instinct to migrate and mm -hmm. breed that out of them. Um, another, another thing with, with feeding the ducks and keeping them concentrated in one area is the, the, the unwanted nutrients that they add. Uh, nutrients are good for a system, but when you have more nutrients than what that system is used to or can handle, then you can have a nutrient overload, which
which can, can kind of have a, 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 a spiraling negative effect on the ecosystem. That there was something like 37 different species of fish in the Red Cedar River and um, and in those a number of different minnow species from darters to game species like northern pike and trout. There are actually trout in the river. There are salmon in there in the river that come up and spawn. Um, there's uh, there's a number of different uh, panfish like your bluegills, bass, you know things like that. It's a great smallmouth fishery, where smallmouth bass fishery where you can catch a number of different fish. And back in the 60s, the river was horrible. It was horribly contaminated, green with algae, lots of chemicals, no creatures. And then in 1972, the Clean Water Act kind of changed those practices of dumping things directly into the, into the river. If you have had, you know, pet feces, goose feces, anything that is on the land in those areas, water comes out, it kind of, it, uh, it, it it, it can enter back into right. the stream. Some of the larger, like E. coli contaminations, um, do occur around around farms, and uh, where you've got maybe manure that's piled up during the winter, or, um, or or feces that is spread on a farm field, and then you do have that spring rain, that spring thaw, the spring flooding. Um, a lot of that material gets washed back into our waterways. So that, that generally when you hear a lot of E. coli contamination um, in, in a river, that's generally the case. I was appointed Director of Natural Resources for Michigan State University. And the river had become quite polluted. Uh, there was, uh, the old sewage treatment plant was totally inadequate. It was right on Kalamazoo Street. Uh, and there were, there, red cedar was smelly or anaerobic down below that point. Uh, and we had a very active student club, a fisheries and wildlife club. And they were concerned about the quality of the water in the river. And I remember distinctly the problem that they gave me. They, they came to my, into my office or the representatives of the club came into my office. And they said, we have surveyed the red cedar river and we have four, found 42 illegal discharge pipes below the surface. So there's a series of these pipings that come into the river all the way along the Red Cedar. And, um, and, and so those have been closed off or they've been separated um, and, and uh, you know, the, the, the harmful chemicals are not able to be put into the river the way they used to be. Uh, a red cedar uh, cleanup that's uh, uh, that happens every year. There's some recognition around the red cedar. In my SP class last year, uh, we essentially went out and took samples of the water every week, and we kind of tested for the pH levels, um, iron levels, and all that good stuff. And essentially, what we found out was that the Red Cedar River is actually very clean, uh, despite the fact that others think that it's a really dirty river, you know, with the bikes and all the college things that people throw in there. Um, in fact, that it actually really is a really clean river. <laughs> 